I'm Ken Brooks. Welcome to another tip from the workbench. Today we're going to talk a little bit about staking a specific item. Smith & Wesson hammer nose or firing pin retaining pin. It's this little pin that's riveted in place on both sides. Okay. Now there's two ways to go to do this. We're going to have to take this one out. Okay. I'm going to show you how to take it out. I'm going to show you how to put it back in because that's, that's where we're at. Knocking it out, a riveted in part reinstalling it, re-riveting it. Okay? The first way is you can get the tool from Smith & Wesson. We had to, so we have it, but you don't have to have it. There is a less expensive way. Okay? The tool, and I'm going to show you how to use it, what the heck, might as well. Have a peg right here that the hammer fits on, the hammer pivot hole. This hole right here, our hammer rotates up and we can drive our rivet into said hole. Okay? Now we're going to tap it through part way, and then we're going to lift the hammer off. The pin will stay in the hammer unless I drive it all the way out. Okay? That way the pin that goes down into the, into the hole in our block has that rivet or that side of the rivet still intact. We've only knocked off the rivet or crushed the rivet back in on the top side. Okay? Okay, here we are in place. Line up the rivet with the hole in the block using a 332nd punch. Tap our rivet and you can see the firing pin jump forward which means the rivet is no longer holding the firing pin. There's our firing pin and spring. Pull the hammer straight up and you can see our pin, our rivet. Okay, you can see the head is mushroomed, so it's larger on this side. We have not damaged that part of the rivet. Now we've replaced our broken firing pin with our new firing pin and spring. Slide the whole affair into position, tap on our pin, again you may have to look through the hole to make sure everything's lined up. Once it's lined up, tap our rivet down as far as it's going to go. Now you'll notice that I'm placing it this is the side of the rivet we have not damaged, but I got to seat it. It's got to be below flush, and the other side has to be out far enough so we can restake it. So you can see I use the same punch, tap that down to below flush without peeling that rivet in. Now what do we do? Being a Smith & Wesson tool, they've got a center punch affair right here, which we can stick either side on doesn't matter. Take a regular center punch that's about the size of the rivet. And we've riveted in our hammer nose pivot pin rivet. Take a look. You can see our rivet is below flush and riveted over. That's the unaltered side, the side that wasn't damaged and this side below flush and riveted in place. Okay, a word of caution when you're using this fixture, the hammer spur is wider than the hammer. You don't want to lay it down like this and go pounding on it because you put undue stress here. So make sure that the spur is off to the side. Okay, if you don't have that fixture, and again, I don't know how expensive they are, but you don't need one. Let me show you. You need a block, some holes in it. Need our damaged Smith & Wesson hammer, however. Simply lay the hammer down on the block, line up the rivet with the hole just like we did in the other fixture using the same diameter punch. Tap our rivet. Watch your firing pin as you go because as soon it's spring-loaded, 
So as soon as the rivet exits the firing pin without exiting the hammer, now you can hit it and drive the rivet all the way through and out, but as soon as the rivet exits the firing pin, the firing pin will move forward onto the punch. Okay? So then you can stop like we did on the other one. The pin stays in the hammer. Now on this one, I'm going to just tap it all the way out just for just so we know. Another another view of what's going to happen. Withdraw our old broken firing pin and spring. There is our rivet. It's been driven out. Okay? You're going to want to take the rivet that's had the head mushroomed off and start it. Once it's started, we can replace our firing pin and spring, our new one, our new hammer nose. Get it started. Drive it down flush, just like the other one, but we're just using a block. Take our punch to seat it below flush. Now we take our vise, take our center punch, clamp it in place, take our center punch, place our hammer over, our Smith & Wesson hammer over our center punch, take another center punch on top. Rivet it in. Make sure that our hammer nose is still spring loaded. Okay, with our vise, which you gotta have, a block which you can make relatively inexpensive, you can even use wood, a center punch, and another center punch, which once again you can make. You've got all the tools you need, you don't need that special Smith & Wesson fixture. If you've got the Smith & Wesson fixture, use it. They are handy, they're nice. Lays down, everything's smooth, the holes line up. It's nice, but you don't have to have it. So now you know how to rivet in your Smith & Wesson firing pin. We'll catch you next time.